welcome to HSC Earth and Environmental Science and Module 6 on Hazards. This is the second video and we're going to um, just focus a little bit more on earthquakes. So the goal of this particular video is for you to use secondary sources to investigate and model the changing depth of the focus of earthquakes at convergent and divergent boundaries. So this means we need to make sure that we understand what the focus of an earthquake is to be able to contrast different depths of focus or foci uh, for earthquakes at convergent and divergent boundaries and to discuss some of the differences between them, preferably uh, in the context of a model. So what this means is that we want to start to think about the sorts of tectonic environments where we might find uh, earthquakes originating and also to try, to try and determine whether there's a difference in where the focus of those earthquakes may be. Remember that we, we talked in the previous video about the epicenter being the spot on the surface of the Earth directly above uh, the focus. And the focus is down in the lithosphere, or at least it's down in the Earth, could be deeper than that. Um, and that's what we want to talk about this time. We want to try and talk about how deep is that focus going to be? Is there a difference in different types of boundaries? Uh, different types of tectonic environments where we might find um, these sorts of uh, phenomena originating. So let's first of all look at divergence. So remember divergence is where we have two plates separating from one another. Usually there is magma that is rising from the mantle through the uh, crust and potentially out. And so a good example of this for us to think about is a mid-ocean ridge. Now in these sorts of environments, we're often um, finding that the emergence of magma is actually happening at a fairly thin part of the crust. So the oceanic lithosphere is thinner than the continental lithosphere. And so we're talking about maybe um, fairly shallow kinds of earthquake foci. So shallow focus. Let me use the singular rather than the plural. So a shallow focus for a lot of these different earthquakes. And partly that's a consequence of the fact that associated with a lot of these mid-ocean ridges, we have transform faults. So along the ridge line, we often have transform faults. These transform faults are, again, often very shallow. And so one of the consequences of uh, this, these sorts of kind of brittle cracks and breaks that are happening in the crust is that you have uh, earthquake activity that are uh, relatively shallow, maybe down as deep as 100 kilometres in depth. Now, relatively speaking, this is reasonably shallow. And so what we want to do is we want to contrast shallow focus earthquakes with deep focus earthquakes. And where are we likely to find them? Well, we find them um, primarily at subduction zones or places where two plates are actually coming together. Now, when they come together, we either get fold mountains, uh, and that an example of that is the continental continental plate that we find at, uh, say, that the, the created the Himalayas, or we also find that at subduction zones. And this is where we have uh, oceanic crust either going under other oceanic crust or under continental crust, and we get this um, zone of subduction. So we get one plate subducting under another. This creates uh, a, a interaction between these two plates deeper into the lithosphere that is known as the Benioff zone, or sometimes the Wadati Benioff zone. And it's basically this region where you have contact between these two plates as one plate is subducting under another plate. And this contact, this buildup of elastic potential energy that is then being converted into kinetic energy as you get these kind of slip strikes happening, that uh, converts that energy into the energy of motion, kinetic energy that then reverberates and, and moves through the rock surfaces, often to the surface where it can create problems. Obviously, if these sorts of things happen in the ocean, then some of the shaking that may happen at the surface can create things like tsunamis. And we will have a look at tsunamis 
uh, as part of this particular module. Once we get too deep into um, this, this zone, this subduction zone, we actually go beyond the point where the, um, the amount of heat that's happening uh, in that region is sufficient to uh, avoid any further uh, brittle failure of the rocks. And so therefore, we find that there is a no earthquake zone if we go deep enough into one of these um, subduction zones. The types of depths that we're talking about in, in one of these subduction zones, one of these Benioff zones, can be uh, as deep as 700 kilometers. That's kind of the cutoff mark that we feel might be the place where um, beyond that, we don't get any more earthquakes. So it's much deeper. So when we compare it to the divergent zones that we were looking at before, this is a much deeper earthquake. This is originating much further down. But we did talk about, um, whilst the subduction zones are deep, we did talk about the fold mountains as well. And this idea of um, slip strike happening at the... Um, in the fold mountains, in the continent-continent convergence that we can get uh, when two continental plates are coming together. The sort of strain that uh, is built up that can then be released in one of these sorts of earthquakes, again, can be very destructive. But once more, the focus of the earthquakes is often very shallow. So whilst it's deep in the subduction zones, in these Benioff zones, it is more shallow in these fold mountains. And if you think about where these sorts of stresses and strains are happening, and obviously that's the places where we're going to get these earthquakes originating, then you can see that for some types of tectonic structures, we're going to have very shallow earthquakes, and for others, they're going to be much deeper. There's a couple of really nice simulations, and I don't usually try and promote too much during these videos, but we're going to have a look at a couple of these in class, and uh, it's really important to try and have a look at some of these types of things that give you a little bit of a, um, a view in time of what's actually happened in terms of earthquake activity and also earthquake severity. So we do know that earthquakes measured on the Richter scale, they have a magnitude or a size associated with them. And usually that size correlates to the sort of damage that they will do. When we map these earthquake zones, we see these uh, very key and very obvious plate boundaries coming up. And you can see that the vast majority of these are very uh, low magnitude. So if I look at this distribution map, and this particular one's come from the Concord Consortium, um, the Seismic Explorer is a really nice one. And you can go through time and see each of these earthquakes and when they've occurred and also how large they were. And when we just quickly look at this map, you can see it's dominated by red dots. Now it's not only red dots, we've got a few of these blues and greens as well, but it's dominated by red dots. It's dominated by these uh, sorts of earthquakes that are of a very shallow type and they're also quite characteristic uh, of these kinds of associations with particular types of plate boundaries. So for example, when we look at this region um, in the Atlantic Ocean between South America and uh, Africa, we can see the mid-ocean ridge virtually being uh, displayed just on the basis of these earthquakes that have occurred in these different regions. These will be transform faults that are part of the Mid-Ocean Ridge system, and they will be ones that are originating relatively um, shallow uh, foci. Having said that, if you look at a classic subduction zone, so a nice subduction zone would occur in the Andes mountain ranges where the NASCAR plate is pushing in there to um, the South American continent, possibly even the Aleutian Islands, where we have ocean-ocean uh, convergence happening here. And you can see in these two regions, it's not now the red colours that are dominating, it's some of these much deeper uh, earthquakes, those that originate much deeper down through the, the lithosphere into the asthenosphere, that we're getting some of these uh, much deeper earthquakes, and we're finding the association with them happening in these kind of convergent zones. Now, just as a, a, another contrast there, if I find the Himalayas and I kind of can just see India kind of peeking through here, there's a huge amount of uh, earthquake activity in this region here, and that's where the Himalayas are. 
and again dominated by these red shallow earthquakes. So this is what we want to try and do is we want to try and get a picture of not just these earthquake um, outlines that, that give us a clue to where the uh, plate boundaries are, but also to get some idea of the depth and potentially the magnitude to get an idea of not just where the boundaries are, but what types of plate boundaries are associated with certain types of tectonic activity and where the, those earthquakes may be originating, where they're coming from. Ultimately, our goal in this topic is to try not just to identify some of the key hazards, but also to be able to look at some of the systems that we have for early warnings, for being able to detect and um, protect life, protect property as much as we can from the consequences of some of these hazards. So this idea of trying to map these out to get a bit of an idea, to look for patterns, and this is what secondary, uh, secondhand data is all about. It's about taking data, it's making the story, it's seeing if you can put any of these things together, if you can see any relationships between this data, if it's suggesting anything to you. And hopefully when you do that, you'll be able to come up with some of these uh, logical and evidence-based conclusions uh, with, from that data set. So what we're gonna do is break out some new Play-Doh in class. We're gonna see if we can model some of these different types of boundaries and also see if we can use some colored Play-Doh to identify where we think those uh, earthquake zones may be and to contrast those that are more likely to occur at depth with those that are more likely to be shallow. But that's an activity for class and thanks for watching.